Caroline Cossey and her fight for the right to marry. Some viewers may find the historic film of medical treatment disturbing. Caroline Cossey is many people's idea of a beautiful woman. She has made her name as international model Tula. But Caroline is a transsexual and was born a boy, Barry Cossey, growing up in Brook near Norwich, before undergoing surgery to change her sex at the age of 20. The UK government, however, still views her as a man. As a transsexual in the UK, I have no rights at all. I mean, I'm helped medically, but stuck in legal limbo. When Caroline recently became engaged to Canadian David Finch, her hopes of a Norfolk wedding were soon crushed. There is no way Caroline Cossey could be recognised as a woman and married as a woman. What harm would it do to the rest of the population if the law were changed? Transsexuals are human beings. We're the same as anybody else. The UK is estimated 10,000 transsexuals are seeking changes in UK law. Law that they say supports prejudice and creates misery. I refuse to be put down and made to feel second class by being transsexual and something I had no control over at birth. So how can the law deal fairly with those at odds with the sex they were born into? Once upon a time, there was Adam and Eve, man, woman, male, female. Today, our ideas of gender are more complex, the boundaries harder to define. Even science recognizes shades of sexual identity between male and female. Some geneticists, like Dr. C.N. Armstrong, who produced this spectrum of sex, see a gradation from man to woman, with transsexuals caught somewhere between the two. Recent medical research talks of brain sex. The idea that the hormones inside the womb define the sex of our brains as well as our bodies. And when something goes wrong, that a male body can have a female brain, a female body, a male brain. But biological theories are not the only possible explanation. My inclination would be to believe that perhaps is a constellation of factors which leads to the development of gender identity problems, at least in childhood, where biological factors may play a part, as well as family factors or very early upbringing. Dr. Di Celi helps children with gender identity problems. With this problem uh, herself, I think, not that expected. The parents actually will change in, in, the, in themselves. As head of a team of psychiatrists, he works with children and their families as they confront many sensitive and difficult problems. So much anger in the past. But gender identity problems can present themselves very early on in, in childhood, and quite often by the age of two or three. Growing up, I was always dressing up, and everyone used to cheat me, and I used to think, oh, well, you know, I'm, I'm soft. But um, it was sort of getting into puberty that I suddenly realized with sex lessons at school, I don't like girls at all, not in that way. Lots of children who have had gender identity problems in childhood will, in adolescence, attempt suicide when they feel confused about themselves and they become isolated from the family and peer group. I've been born this way and I've tried to make the most of it. Unfortunately, I'm very happy that I've born in this day and age where I can be medically helped. I think I would have been a little more saddened if it had been 100 years ago. 
probably killed myself, so I'm, I'm pleased that I was born now. London's Charing Cross Hospital houses the country's main gender identity clinic. Dr. Don Montgomery is responsible for the counselling and treatment received by over 2,000 National Health Service patients. Each year, he receives 300 new referrals from GPs around the country, but he has no certain explanations for the causes of transsexualism. I think it's unlikely to be fully understood within the next uh, 10 uh, or 20 years or even well into the future. Uh, I mean, gender identity disorders go back into antiquity recorded by the ancient Greeks in their mythology and uh, in their stories. And although we're making rapid advances in our understanding of human psychology and of human genetics, I still think uh, we've got many mysteries to, uh, uh, to live with in the future. It's the cause of great distress for many transsexuals that their condition is confused with transvestism or simply dressing in the clothes of the opposite sex. Transvestite is a man who generally likes to dress in women's clothes and, and uh, get a kick. And then 99% uh, of them are, are heterosexual. A transsexual is someone who is physically one thing and, and psychologically of another. And in most cases, we are hormonally, if not chromosomally, different. So there's clearly a difference. The difference is also clear in what the person is willing to go through to live in their new role. Male to female transsexuals endure many hours of electrolysis. Both sexes take hormone therapy, as well as undergoing very painful surgery. After a thorough and prolonged psychiatric assessment, the suitable patients might be uh, given hormonal reassignment initially, and if that is psychologically and socially successful, then they fulfill various criteria, of which the most important is, is the real life test of living cross-gender role for at least two years, then such patients may go forward for surgery. But treatment hasn't always been so sympathetic. In the past, people with severe gender identity disorders or transsexualism, uh, people saying they wanted to change sex, were often regarded as mad. They might have been treated with uh, drugs or, or even electroconvulsive therapy, ECT. Um, I think this showed a mistaken or a misguided understanding of the patient by the psychiatrist at that time. Thank you for calling the Transsexual Information Line. Many people struggling with their gender identity feel too much shame to talk openly about it. No one knows the true extent of the condition. Some say there are as many as 50,000 transsexuals in the UK. The tabloid perception of transsexuals as freaks has perpetuated a climate of fear for the last 20 years since the first case involving a transsexual came to law. Model April Ashley had been born a man. When her marriage to Arthur Corbett ended, no one knew how influential the Corbett versus Corbett case would be. It was quite a simple little matter of someone asking for maintenance when the marriage fell apart and they'd gone through or were thinking of going through a divorce, but uh, suddenly everyone sat back and said, well, hang on a minute, wasn't April Ashley once a man? Uh, whatever that may mean. And, of course, the court was stuck with the most terribly difficult problem, uh, although it thought it was just handling a simple maintenance question. What the judge decided was that for the purposes of marriage, the criteria by which you judge whether a person is of the male or of the female sex are those which are physically apparent at the time of birth. No regard should be had, said the judge, to anything in the nature of what we call brain sex nowadays, or psychological sex. What he said was, everything exists at birth, it's biologically defined, and only these criteria are of any importance. And the court decided that April Ashley was, in fact, a man. And that meant she didn't get any maintenance, but also uh, it meant that a lot of transsexuals thereafter have been frustrated in their attempt to be recognised fully as members of the opposite sex. Mark Rees is a female-to-male transsexual who was the first to challenge the UK government in the European Court of Human Rights. Born Brenda Rees, 
He grew up as an awkward schoolgirl, often thought of as a tomboy. For a long time before I could get any treatment, doctors were saying such things as, well, you'll grow out of it, or you'll have to learn to live with it. Or the classic comment was, goodbye, my dear, enjoy being a woman. His claim was that because of his male psychological sex, there had been a mistake on his birth certificate, which was denying him the right to marriage and privacy. But the court's judgment upheld the UK government's position. It was on the grounds of they were concerned to preserve traditional marriage, whatever that may be. And also they didn't want to impose new burdens upon the rest of us, the population, whatever they may have been. It was a very surprising judgment. A very disappointing one, of course. In fact, the case led the government to a concession, which now allows identity documents such as passport and driving license to show the transsexual's new title. A model who was born male and who changed sex 15 years ago has been to the Court of Human Rights in Strasbourg today to try to get the law altered so that she can marry. It was 1990 when Caroline Cossey took her new passport and the UK government back to the same court. Less than a year before, she had gone through a marriage ceremony with Elias Fatal. But when the news of the world broke the story, Elias, who had known about her transsexuality, parted from her under pressure from his family and the marriage was pronounced void. She had already won her case at the EC Commission on Human Rights and it was thought that the court would force the UK government to change its law. The European Court decided in the Caroline Cossey case um, that Britain had not violated her rights by refusing to issue an amended birth certificate and that it had not violated her rights by refusing to let her marry as a woman. The court had an opportunity there to say well, we think a man or a woman uh, is ordained by the gender preference, the role that psychologically they prefer to play. But no, they didn't do that. So they've had their chances. Uh, and uh, trying to be charitable to the European court, uh, I think that they've not exactly done anything better than score own goals. Peter Wormold, the Registrar General of England and Wales, is the person who administers the law on births, deaths and marriages. He sets out who transsexuals can marry. They can only marry somebody who is of the, op the opposite biological sex. Um, this is a very unhappy position to be in, but it does mean that somebody who is living as a woman can only legally marry another woman. Or alternatively, somebody else who has changed sex. It would have been great to have been able to marry in, in Norfolk, but uh, sadly I can't marry anywhere in, in Great Britain. Janine and David, who does not wish to be identified, live together with David's seven-year-old daughter from his previous marriage. Both were married in their original sexes, they now wish to marry each other, which is legally permitted. But when they came to the ceremony, they hit a snag. When we were shown into the ceremony room, and the lady says, this is where the ceremony will take place, and we'd look around the room, and it was quite nice. And she says, oh, there is one other little matter. She says, um, um, you, Janine, um, unfortunately, she says, um, will have to say, um, I, Janine Newham, take David, um, I'm about to be your lawful wedded wife. Um, and I, so I just looked at her gobsmacked. I thought, and I looked at David, and I thought, oh, I don't believe this. I said, I can't say that. I said, that's just making a mockery of, of who we are. And she said, well, I'm very sorry. She said, it is the law, and you will have to say it at the ceremony if you want to get married. It's also a denial of who we are to get up and say that um, as a matter of choice uh, I'd sooner not get married than be obliged to do something which is really against my principles as a human being I just feel that's very undignified 
just seems the official attitude is that we are pretending to be who we are and we aren't really who we are. Children are at the heart of any family and when families break up, the children often suffer most. The law is clear how it deals with this. The needs of the child are paramount. But when one parent is undergoing a gender change, what are the needs of the child then? And how can they best be helped to adjust? If the child is very attached to the parent, the attachment will remain, even if the parent has changed the biological sex. Now, if the contact and the relationship is discontinued, that might lead to all sorts of fantasies about what has happened to the father or, or, or the mother. And if not a proper explanation is not given to the child, this might have in the long term damaging effects on, on the child. When I was first going through the process of seeking medical help, I also sought help from an educational psychologist as I was a bit concerned about the possible effects on my daughter. And she said to me, well, she's obviously very well balanced. Nothing wrong with her at all. I don't think you've anything to worry about anyway. Because all that she's really concerned about is that you're the person that she loves and she knows that you love her and as long as you're always there for her, that's what matters. Stephen Whittle is a research lawyer at Manchester Polytechnic and a female-to-male transsexual. Are there circumstances when transsexuals aren't suitable as parents? There are circumstances in which lots of people aren't suitable to be parents, but they're not classed as a, a group. Black people, for example, imagine the outcry in this country if it was said that black people shouldn't have access to their children or gay men shouldn't have access to their children ever. They really don't like the idea of uh, their vision of men dressed up in women's frocks, which is how they still consider the transsexual to be. But is there any firm evidence that the courts are treating transsexual parents as one group? I was married some years ago. I have two children. According to a judge, I'm not allowed to see those children. The judge said that from what he had found, with just two or three cases, was that it just didn't work for a transsexual parent to go and see their children. The children could not accept it. Solicitor Heather Vassy has acted for transsexual parents wishing to gain access to their children. In my experience, I, I felt that, that the judge in one particular case could not understand how anybody could be transsexual. And having decided to uh, undergo gender reassignment, that person gave up their rights to, to continue to be a parent to, to the child. We asked the Home Office to describe the situation for transsexual parents. Refusing to be interviewed, they issued a statement. The child's best interests are decided on the facts of the case, and there's no question of discrimination against any particular parent or classes of parent. I have felt upset and quite shocked by the, the lack of sympathy shown to clients of mine. The people who I have developed a relationship with as I have taken the case for them, and to find that at the end of that case, when the case has come before the courts, they are treated as less than human. It's, uh, it seemed to me very wrong. Come on, come on. <laughs> Stephen Whittle is looking forward to being a father, for his partner Sarah is expecting their first child by AID, artificial insemination by donor. This relatively unusual situation has been sanctioned by a fertility clinic. The fact that he has succeeded where many other transsexuals have failed doesn't make his parental position any more secure. As a father of my child, well, I don't exist. I'm not a father of my child. I'm an anomalous parent under a parental rights agreement with my partner. I'm not a father, I'm not a mother. <laughs> and we don't know what the situation would ever be in court if we came to separate. The 
ambition of some transsexuals to have children is both at the same time poignant and also challenging for the legal system. Why would transsexuals be eliminated from the question as a matter of principle rather than uh, an open-minded approach which should be let's look at each couple or each person and say the way we judge anyone else in adoption or whatever do you think this person would be a good enough parent? Work is hard enough to find, but for the transsexual it's even harder. The Department of Employment insists that transsexuals enjoy the same rights as everyone else, but these rights only reside in the person's original sex. For Mark Reese, a trip to the job center means confronting a computer which tells him and the staff that he is a single female. Since employment is usually a condition of pre-operative medical treatment, most try to stay in their jobs, not always successfully. But at BT's headquarters in the centre of London, a pioneering policy has been worked out that gives a great deal of hope to many transsexuals working for large employers. We had to look at it not only from that point of view, but from the point of view of the work group they were in and the customers. Our managers needed to know how to deal with the problems surrounding the transsexual, and we've had, with permission of the, the individual involved, to educate their colleague workers so that they understand the, the process that is, is going on. We often find there's a great deal of confusion about what transsexualism is. There's um, confusion with transvestites, there's confusion with homosexuality. And our welfare officers spend time carefully positioning what these issues are, and particularly what the transsexual is having to go through. Not all employers are as sympathetic as BT. Denise was a successful part-time teacher at a secondary school. The threat that the parents had made to the head teacher was very simply this, that if the head teacher took no action to remove me from the staff, then she was going to systematically go round every single parent and tell them exactly what it is that I had been through. The head teacher came to the point, she said, we could not afford the scandal. The fact is that because I applied for this job as a woman and the fact that I am legally a man, that I could be dismissed at any time. In fact, at any time, a transsexual person may well be accused of deception. Many transsexuals say they are unwilling to invoke the industrial tribunal system as it could involve them in unwanted publicity. The Department of Employment freely admit that it's not illegal to discriminate against someone for being transsexual. Despite repeated requests, they refused to be interviewed. They maintained that our questions were matters for the Home Office. The Home Office maintain that they are matters for the Department of Employment. <laughs> So how does the UK compare with other countries in their treatment of transsexuals? Transsexuals can be recognised in their new roles. Um, likewise, most of Canada and America, and I think now in Australia, they are changing the law. In most European and Scandinavian countries, transsexuals can be legally recognised in their new sex. This usually involves a change to the birth certificate, the ability to marry, to found a family, and to have employment protection. Some also protect the right to privacy. Another country that has made provisions is South Africa. I was amazed when I discovered this, but I do have personal knowledge of it, because my first cousin is also a female to male transsexual, and he is South African, and he has been able to legally change his role. In fact, a couple of weeks ago, he got married legally to a woman. South Africa changed its law in 1974, nearly 20 years ago. International practice varies very considerably. Um, uh, Britain isn't out on a limb on this. There are a lot of countries whose laws are the same as ours. But the question of what the law should be, I'm afraid, isn't one for me. Um, I simply administer it. In their statement, the Home Office concurred. The position of transsexuals varies considerably within the European community. 
and it is not always appropriate to make direct comparisons. The government has made a concession on prisons, though. Swap out. Any male to female transsexual sent to a man's prison will be housed in the prison hospital. But some say this amounts to solitary confinement. What people forget is that concessions can be removed at any time and are often removed for individuals, even though. And uh, one, of the, one of the main purposes of this meeting is to demystify this subject. Um, to These and other issues were on the agenda when the Liberal Democrats held a fringe meeting for the transsexuals campaign at a recent party conference. Which I don't think is the main issue at all. And it's, uh, how, how many transsexuals are there actually? United Kingdom. MP and barrister Alex Carlyle has pledged his support and a promise of a private member's bill if he wins in the House of Commons lottery. But any parliamentary legislation, even in the light of new medical evidence, would raise many thorny issues, both practical and ethical. The law is concerned with uh, the public interest, uh, social political issues, um, the sanctity of marriage, certain basic principles about what one's identity is. And the question then is, in the light of what is alleged to be new evidence, should the law change its views? And the only way you can answer that is, what are the gains and what are the costs for the law to do that? The April Ashley case has set the legal precedent for the last 20 years. Parliamentary reform, though, is not the only way the law could be changed. Alternatively, for a couple who are married to go to the divorce courts again and to challenge the original ruling in Corbett and Corbett. And the final option is to go back to Europe. If somebody makes it back to Europe, I'm fairly certain they will win. Legal change or not, there's still no guarantee transsexuals will be treated any differently by society at large. Sex change is a very contentious issue for uh, everybody. Um, the layman, the psychiatrist, the GP, uh, many people have quite negative feelings about it uh, and uncomfortable feelings and I, I think it's uh, uh, appropriate that we do feel uncomfortable when somebody challenges our, our firm categories of uh, maleness and femaleness and how that fits into society. Caroline Cossey's long wished for wedding finally took place legally in Canada this summer. In fact, she and her husband-to-be had more problems over being of different religions than over Caroline's transsexuality. If either of you know any lawful impediment why you may not be married, I charge you before God, the searcher of all hearts, to declare it now. Your time is up. <laughs> Let us come before our Lord in prayer, let us pray. In the presence of God and before these witnesses. In the presence of God and before these witnesses. I, David, take you, Caroline. I, David, take you, Caroline. To be my wife. To be my wife. To have and to hold from this day forward. To have and to hold from this day forward. For better, for worse. Already, Caroline's sister Pam has agreed to carry a surrogate child for the couple of whom David will be the biological father. Caroline's fight is both won and lost. For the thousands of transsexuals in the UK, the hope of a normal life still eludes them. Caroline Cossey is one of Steve Rich's guests on BBC Local Radio, starting now. You can phone in on 0604 23 44 55.